I just started Me. recording, so um, okay. just okay. so you guys okay. know, because that okay. was that was gold. Can you say yeah, that, that again, Wes? Yeah. Sure. So he came over. Christopher so Atkins came over. Greg Evigan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Greg I met. Evigan. I met Greg years ago because the teen idols used to all hang out together back in the day. It was a small community of people. So Greg came over to my house and uh, he said, listen, I'll teach you to play the piano if you'll teach me to act. Uh, needless to that. say, I don't play the piano <laughs> still. <laughs> so <laughs> and he doesn't did say okay too much about himself. my acting skill. Yeah. He did you okay held for himself. up your the bargain. <laughs> listen, he's amazing. And, you know, what a talented guy. I mean, really. Just so all around. nice. Multi-talented. Yeah. What a he was too. so, so nice. Um, I also just love that that you just said. The teen idols all used to hang out together. I'm, like, imagining this, like, exclusive club that you have to, like, have a secret knock or a secret handshake. Right. It's like, <laughs> you know, to get into the teen idol club, you have to have been in Tiger Beat X amount of times. You have to have – there's this, like, benchmark you have to have met to um, – to get into the well, back idol. back in the day, Lawfare Publications had like a Tiger Beat, and I think there was a Sixteen Magazine, and there would be these events. And even Rhoda Barrett had a magazine, and so oh, yeah. we, we would get to know each other. And I remember I rented a house in Beverly Hills because I was making money for the first time. And I remember one day, uh, Sean uh, Sean Cassidy comes over. This is before Sean had a TV show, and Leif Garrett, and they came over to swim at my house. Oh, and I've got right. a picture somewhere of Sean sitting in one of my big chairs. But this is- and this and this is way before Sean was famous. And of course now he's a yeah. he's a wonderful director and and he's right. you know he's Writer amazing. And, yeah, this is the information yes. we're here you for, Wesley. This is the type of tidbits yeah. we love. So just the more of the, that you have, this is fantastic. We love it. Well, Chris, okay. do you want to be official? And- yeah, here's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to. Well, Carolyn, do we need to do the technical aspect of it? Well. I'll just say if sometimes it will just get booted out for some reason. It doesn't happen all the time. But if for some chance you aren't, you can't hear us anymore and you seem to have been booted out, just go back to that link you used to, to get in here and you'll just pop back in. So will come right okay. back in. Um, we should introduce and ourselves probably. what I'm going to do is I'm going to – oh, we should – sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we are the Pop Culture Preservation Society. I'm Kristen Nilsson. I'm sitting in my um, recording studio in my attic in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And my name is and Michelle. I'm and, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, th- th- we do this a lot, too. You go next, Michelle. I'm Michelle Newman, and um, also in the outskirts of Minneapolis. But, um, yeah, we're snowed in here, so Mexico sounds lovely right now. Oh, no kidding. And I am Carolyn Cochran, and I attempt to do the technical stuff, but I am still a newbie at this, so I appreciate your patience with us, and we are just so excited to chat with you today. You have Thank you so probably no idea me. how excited these 50-something-year-old women are. <laughs> <laughs> and our 50-something-year-old listeners, too. This is going to be crazy. Oh, definitely. So, yeah, thank you, thank you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read sort of like an official introduction of you, and um, you'll know when I'm done. And... Uh, <laughs> And then we'll start we'll the, the interrogation, as it were. <laughs> but we're really nice, we promise. We won't give you any hard questions. Um, okay, are you ready, Wesley? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. On March 12th, we are so excited to be attending the Night of Dreams Teen Idol Dinner Party at the Nixon Library in Yorba Linda, California, an event that you, dear listeners, can attend also. We even have a discount code for you. And at that dinner party, you can meet one of our childhood icons. We are so excited to welcome this icon of Saturday morning TV, the man who tumbled over a waterfall and landed in another dimension, all for the viewing pleasure of millions of children who grew up in the 70s. Wesley Ewer, also known as Will from Land of the Lost, is our guest today because he understands the impact that this long ago children's show had on us. It's an impact that shows up in the standardized opening of every single one of our podcasts, Wesley, thank you for being here today, and thank you for making it over that waterfall. There he is. Thank Yay. you. I- <laughs> and we, you just Yay. clicked and on. We can you're... see you. We see you. Yes, we can see you. What perfect timing. <laughs> you... And you're moving. <laughs> Yay. Hey, guys. Hey. Oh, my God. Thank you for having me on. This is great. Did I say your name correctly? Yeah, you did. Awesome. It's like, it's like Europe without the up. Oh, oh. duh. Yeah. <laughs> great. That oh, works. Cool. Or Eureka without the cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are loving, uh, he, uh, listeners, uh, Wesley, just his video just clicked in. He's all the way in Mexico right now. But I just want to describe to you that he's sitting here 
in a Slee Stack t-shirt. Of of course he is, right? We would expect yes, no. We would expect no less. And um, I asked him earlier, but I want him to repeat this, listeners, so you get to hear. I said, um, Wesley, how many Slee Stack T-shirts do you own? I have tons of them. I've got closets <laughs> filled them up. I have four thousand eight hundred and seventy-five. <laughs> well, I, seventy-four. One of them got destroyed in the in the dryer. But no. oh, no. <laughs> it, the you know what's amazing is the merchandising. This show, you know, is going to celebrate its 50th anniversary in uh, next year. And 50 years later, I can't believe it has this huge following and it continues to grow. And all, all the sort of official and unofficial merchandising that comes out, you can buy, you know, on, on Amazon or wherever. And uh, it, it, every once in a while, I'll, I'll go on like a Red Bubble or one of those T-shirt places and there's another image. And it's so odd to buy a shirt with my image on it of me. And I'll pay for it. <laughs> and, <it's> just, <laughs> and, and you know what? I love it. I, I love it. So You're it keeps the show alive. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And it keeps it alive for us, too. I mean, there's a reason we're all still talking about it 50 years later. And we were just talking about this. Like, in this era of CGI animation and technology and, and all these, I don't even know the technical word to say, like, special effects, that this, such, such a rudimentary show is having yeah. such an awakening, having such such a, a, a growth period. It's so funny. Well, what is it about well, it, do you think, that keeps Phil coming back? It's the story. It's what, what we had on Land of the Lost was we had the Star Trek writers writing our show. And really? David Gerald, who wrote, if you're a Star Trek fan, uh, Trouble with Tribbles was one of his episodes. And he was our head writer, and he got all the... Star Trek had just finished its first, you know, its first three years. And he got Walter Koenig, who played Chekhov, to create Enoch, the talking sleep stack. He had DC Fontana, Larry Niven, Spinrad, all these amazing sci-fi writers who wrote these amazing scripts. And so the, the, you're right that there's no CGI, and, and the effects are kind of hokey you know, for the 70s. I mean, of course, at the time, they were state-of-the-art. It was amazing. Sure. But it's the story. I mean, as Shakespeare said, the story is the thing. And, you know, we're talking time doorways. And David said at a panel recently, David Gerald, he said, I told my writers, we're not writing a Saturday morning show. We're writing a sci-fi show that airs on Saturday morning. Mm. So they never talked down to the audience. I mean, there were, there were matrices and, and doppelgangers and, and, and antecedents and all sorts of stuff. And they never, like, said, okay, kids, here's what this means. They just right. said it, and the kids had to, like, learn it. Yep. Right. right. And I, it, it was, like out of my um, realm of understanding, but I was there 100%. Like I didn't need to be able to understand everything so specifically. I was like, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm mm -hmm. gonna get it. And it just, like you said, it wasn't talking down to the kids. It felt like I was watching something very sophisticated. You just kind of blew my mind with the Star Trek thing because Star Trek is the same way where it has these really diehard fans and it always has. And it also yeah. has a similar feel to it. I would never put those two together, but you're right, that's a total match. Well, and I well, think Steve it also, I was just going to say one of the appeals to what you were just saying is how they never talked down to the audience, but there was something for everyone. Um, I was only five when I started watching Land of the Lost, and I said in um, a conversation we had earlier about it how I was kind of held hostage to watch it because my older sister, you know, that was what the one TV channel in our house was, was on, right? So if I wanted to watch TV on Saturday mornings during that time slot, I was watching Land of the Lost. I was terrified, but I was there for the dinosaurs, and I was there for the family. I was there for the interaction the again, of yeah. the brother and the sister and the dad, and um, I was ter I watched it probably like this, you know, the whole time, but... <laughs> Yes, at five years old and then six years old, do you think I was understanding, you know, all the, the talk about portals and all of this stuff? Absolutely not. To me, it was this family, oh, no, that's trapped back in dinosaur time, and I was there for it. So I think it was really a smart show in that it did appeal to so many different age, um, age levels. You know, it... it People ask about about the Will Ferrell movie and with, what they did with Land of the Lost. Of course, it, it became a comedy, and what, what was missing, and one of the reasons it faltered, was because Land of the Lost was, it was about a family without, we'd lost our mom. This was the Saturday morning show that was talking about real issues, and we were trapped in this world trying to survive. And we have more fans that come up, at, we do the autograph shows and things like that. Kathy, who played my sister Holly, she's 
she's really my sister in life now. I mean, we are best friends. She just, in fact, she just moved to Palm Springs to be next to us, and she's coming to Mexico to stay at my house uh, for a couple of weeks in a few weeks. But um, we have people come up to us, our table, and are, are like crying. Uh, one guy came up. And he said, listen, I've got to tell you something. I, I know it's going to sound silly what he said. And he was, he was in his 50s. And he's, he said, when I was a kid, in, when Land of the Lost changed from the second season to the third season, we lost our dad. And our uncle came in. And he said, my family was getting a divorce. And my dad was leaving us. And he said, I was a mess. And I didn't know what to do. But I saw in Land of the Lost that the family could survive even though the dad left. He says, it gave me the strength to get through that time of my life. And he's hugging us and crying. He said, thank you guys so much. Because as a performance, we never know the ripple effect of things we do. Yeah. You know, we, we read a script, we do it, and we move on. But there, there is an effect, especially when scripts are written so beautifully, like David Gerald and all these guys that wrote these scripts. Well, and that, the, you just answered a really important question. We were so excited for the Land of the Lost movie, but... You, it turned. It was something else entirely. Yeah. It was apples and oranges, and so you could have really lost those Star Trek people. And I don't want to label them Star Trek people, but the people who were really there for that intricate story. That intricate story was not there. It's no, not that it wasn't and, an and in fact, movie. it was apples and oranges. Sid, Sid Croft, and, uh, and who's still a great friend of mine, I talk to Marty Croft all the time. They're oh just great gosh. guys. <laughs> they're you know they're legends, and I and I'm just honored to be part of their life. But they. Sid said he contacted Gene Roddenberry to ask him if he'd be our head writer because it was Star Trek had just finished the, the, at Paramount the three years, and I think they were sharing a lot at the time, a, a soundstage. And, uh, and Gene said, I can't do it, but I've got this writer named David Gerald. You've got to meet him. And that's who they hired. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is amazing. And I wanted to share, I was a little bit older than Michelle, and I, again, the story was was what I showed up for because I hoped every time that you were going to get out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess in <laughs> essence there wouldn't have been a show anymore, but at the right. same time it was just like, this is the week. This is when they're going to get out. I just wanted <laughs> you so guys terrible. to get out, and that's kind of, you know, why I showed up. And we recently rewatched the um, the pilot, and I, I wrote down two lines that were in the pilot that I thought were pretty profound. Um, and one was um, when you first meet Ch Chaka, right, and you're – telling your dad about him and holly says um can we keep him and your dad says people don't own right. other people Ooh, and i was yeah. like I mic that drop feeling. that we was thought that just... was, we thought that too my husband and i were watching it carolyn we were like mm -hmm. oh wow that's a next level thing to, especially 1974 yeah right yeah. that's funny because at that moment i was watching it with my 20 year old son which was that's a trip right there and he goes He's not a dog. <laughs> like, he was really <laughs> upset. Yeah. So he probably was tuning in to Rick. Like, yeah, well, you can't own other people. He's a pacuni. Uh, and yeah. then oh. later on, when um, I guess maybe you were talking about Chaka being your friend, and um, it says, your dad says again, it takes a lot of trust to make a friend. And I thought for the kids listening back then, like, that was, that's another powerful mm -hmm. line, you know? So and we those trusted were, Rick. Yes. Right? Like, he was an authority figure. Well, we exactly. Were he was like our dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is so true. And, and, yeah. and Kathy, uh, Kathy's written a book called Run, Holly, Run, and she had quite a, quite a dramatic life. And Spencer Milligan, who played our dad, is still to this day like a dad to her. And we are oh. all very close friends. I talk to Spencer all the time. I'll call Spencer and go, I go, hey, Papa. He goes, oh. he goes, Hey, hey, Will, how you doing? You know, and uh, and I go, Papa, can you hear me? And he's like, but he has a great sense of humor. And Phil Paley, who played Chaka, we are, the the four of us are truly a family. And yeah. it, I've always said that Cross didn't just cast my TV family, but they cast my real life family too. Oh, that is amazing. okay. I'm covered in goosebumps for like the last and a half years. Yeah. 50 years ago. That's yeah. 50 years. And we're just, I'm mean, telling you, we are so close, all of us. And it, it's, it, and it breaks all sorts of barriers. And just, I don't know, I just, I, I, I thank the Crofts over and over for my family. We love to hear that so much. And I know our listeners will love to know that. 
Um, but Wesley, can you, can we go back a little bit and can you kind of tell us how this all came to be for you? Like, what did you think of that script when you first read it? And we were wondering, like, did you think, oh, this is, you know, like you've said, it's so well written, but did you think of this as high drama or did you see it kind of as the campiness that makes Land of the Lost so beloved today? Because I'll tell you what, back in 1974, all of us watching it, we saw it as high drama. We were fraught with tension every week. We were scared silly of the T-Rex. We were scared silly of the Sleast Axe. Many of us still are, Kristen's husband. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, you know, now we all watch it. And I think one reason it has become this kind of cult classic is because we appreciate and we applaud the campiness of the the kind of primitive sets and you know that little that little raft in the in the intro that is like ah, you know goes down the, the waterfall but <laughs> looks like a tidy blo- bowl remember oh, yeah. the commercials yeah, with, like, with the blue yeah. water yeah but but take us back because like i just said and we've talked about a little um we talked a little bit about earlier as viewers in 1974 whether we were five or whether we were eight or nine we saw it as very realistic and very high drama and very tension filled as the actor who was in it, how did you see it in 1974 when you first when it first came to be for you? It was amazing. I, I was I was on Days of Our Lives at the time playing Mike Horton, which I did for about a decade. And when I got the script, because remember this was it had never been this was a drama on Saturday morning. We were you know we had had the Flintstones and all the cartoons and and all the silliness and even puffin stuff in Lidsville from the Crofts. Everything was silly. It was kids. And then suddenly you have a drama. I mean, there's one episode where a slee stack pretends he's our mother and morphs into our mother to try to kill us. I mean, this is kids on Saturday morning. And I think that's because it never talked down. I mean, again, David Gerald said, I'm writing, I'm writing a show, you know, a, a sci-fi show that just happens to air on Saturday morning. And Land of the Lost, it, the budget was so thin because it's Saturday morning. We filmed two episodes a week, so two and a half days to film each episode, which was unheard of. I mean, it's never, it's yeah, just never been done, quick. I don't think, yeah. ever again. Mm-hmm. And so we had this amazing two, two sound stages. They were huge. One of them was like our lagoon and with all the jungle. The other was the interior of our cave. And then the, the blue screen, which is now green screen. And every celebrity you can imagine would come visit our set, from Elton John to Charo to uh, Stallone to uh it, it was it was there was one point where charo was run, was chasing chaka around the jungle going coochie 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 coo. but it was it was it was it was, right there. it was an event i mean it, people wanted to come to our set because it was it, it, it they'd never seen anything like it before that's so funny. i love see, these okay, are the I these are the things we love to know yeah for sure Charo. Oh, just say the name Charo and everybody goes back in time, right? Okay, I need And to she, I've got to tell you, we did a show, Kathy and, and Phil and I did a show recently in Hollywood, and Charo was sitting across from us. And I'll tell you, she is still as beautiful, and she looks exactly like she did from the 1970s. You know, and just as perky and fun as you can imagine. <laughs> and nobody really knows how old she is. It's a mystery. No. <laughs> it's a mystery. No, I don't. <laughs> Okay, I have a very important question for you. This is a vital question for us and for our listeners. We need you to settle something for us. So I mentioned in our in the little intro there about our, I said something about our podcast intro, um, the one we say every single week. We've said it over 100 times. And what we say as we introduce our podcast is, we believe our Gen X childhoods gave us unforgettable songs, stories, characters, and images. And if we don't talk about them, they'll disappear like Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition. We say it every single week. And we have gotten some hate mail from people (laughs) saying you're doing it wrong because Marshall was their last name. Rick was the dad. But I've been singing Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition. (laughs) And uh, who's right? Who's right? Oh gosh, well, you're both right. Yes, Marshall (laughs) is our last name and it was wrong. I mean, so it should have been Rick, Marshall, Will, and Holly. But Marshall, I, and, oh, and you know, I sang the song. I sang the song in the Wait, opening credits. You did? Yeah. And I the closing credits. Yeah. I was recording back from Motown at the time. 
And uh, so they said, Wesley, Wesley, come sing it. So it was Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapids, it struck their tiny raft. Ah! Plunging down a thousand feet below to the land of the lost, to the land of the lost. And then Grumpy goes, roar. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Everybody's God. synapses are firing right now. We like, are, Ooh. we are, we are, I can't even tell you right now. There's goosebumps <laughs> in, on my goosebumps. Yes, let's just say Wesley, it. Let's that's right. for what it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we're it right. Is, we just found out we're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. It should, it yeah. should have been Rick Marshall, Will and Ollie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were, you know, listen, their budget, they, I don't know how fast they wrote that song, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that looks But you're out, you when we get an email or a DM that says, hey, we love your podcast, but just wanted, you know, every week you say, you know, um, like Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition, because basically we're saying what our, po- our podcast represents. We don't, the whole reason we started this is because we want to preserve all of these Gen X pop culture nuggets, right? We don't want them to disappear like Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition because <laughs> you disappeared. And when people say that, We go back to the lyrics. We Google the lyrics again because we're like, are we wrong? And we're like, no. And we we say, what could they say? Rick, Will, and Holly. But the way you just did it, Wesley, actually works. Rick Marshall, Will, and Holly Holly. on a routine expedition. And the greatest. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it works. It works. Earthquake ever known. High on the rapids. It struck their tiny rock. Yeah. So, listeners, we got it from the actual singer's mouth. (laughs) It works, right? somebody close to it but right. the actual singer of the words right you know he knows and it, it, it and it's amazing how that song has has lived in pop culture there's an episode of uh family guy uh where peter actually auditions for lois for a part in, in a, a community theater and he sings the theme song to land of the lost is his audition <laughs> oh it's, it's well, tena- jack jack black has a band called tenacious d and you should see, he, he rocks out the theme song to Land of Lost and the closing song, which I also sing, which closed the show every week. And it, it's amazing how many different cover bands have, have, have performed the, the opening and closing song of Land of the Lost. And the, and the closing song is the best. Yeah. yeah. Can you give us a little bit of that, Wesley? like a jam. I want Wesley to give us a little bit of the closing. Uh, sure. When I look... All around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost, I'm lost. Find me living in the land of the lost, 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 lost. <laughs> living in the land of the lost. <laughs> Sid and Marty Croft. That's like the best day of my life. Do all of it. Oh my God. Okay, oh, that was can so we good. please clip the, that audio and use um, somehow in um, one of our promos, yeah. Wesley? Will you give us? And Michelle, show? we so, need yeah. to put of that course. Of course. In the newsletter. That needs okay. to oh my gosh, you got to see you. It's great, and you know they did uh, they did Bubble Boy for Disney with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, it's, it's a fabulous movie, and he pretends he's me, and he's living in a bubble, and, and he. He sings, he, he rocks out the, at the opening of the show. He's playing his guitar and he sings the closing theme song to Land of the Lost. So it, it continues. It. it just, it has a life of its own. When, when I went on the set with Will Farrell when he was doing the movie at Universal, Will came running. I never met Will before, but he was a huge fan of Land of the Lost. And he actually played a character in another movie called, and his character's name was Marshall Will and Holly. And... <laughs> And his last name was Will and Holly. And so I, I go on the set of Universal I'm with Marty Croft, and, and, and he breaks character, and he runs over to me, and he goes, Wesley, Wesley, I sang the theme song yesterday in the movie, because he knew that I sang the original one. And he was just, you know, he, he, even though the movie, you know, didn't do what it was supposed to do, his heart was in it, because he yeah. loved that show. That's good to know. Yeah, and I think that's such that, a cultural touchstone for us. I mean, it's such a, you know... a part that we can all relate to um having grown up at that time it's like you can go up to somebody your age and say 
Marshall, Will, and Holly, and they'll take off and do the rest yeah. of the um, of the right. line. So it's and now kind we know of, that Wilson or Will Smith, yeah, Will, Will Ferrell is. was one of those people. That's right. You know what it is? Yeah. Any reference to Land of the Lost? Just you say the word Sleesack or something, Carolyn, like you're just saying. It's one of those. You mm-hmm. know how right now the big hashtag is if you know, you know. You know, like if YK. Mm-hmm. Right. YK, right? If you know, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like any reference to Land of the Lost is like that for our generation. And for sure. Hello world, is a song that we're singing. 